This is the final lesson. After this, you will be sent to your assigned unit, and then you will be someone else's problem. In this lesson, you will learn how to operate the updated Longbow Sensor Suite. This includes the Longbow Fire Control Radar, the TADS Sighting System, as well as several new and modified multifunction displays. In addition, you will be given advanced instruction on how to best utilize your wingman. Let's begin. At the start of each mission, your engines will be running, but the rotor brake will be engaged, keeping the blades from turning. To toggle the rotor brake, press the R key. Good. Now, climb to a hover at 200 feet. Essay 6, detected 10 o'clock. Good. Now, activate the auto hover feature by pressing the Notice the addition of a hover indicator on the iHads, which activates whenever you use the auto hover command. First, let's talk about the new and improved multi-function displays. The flight page MFD is a new addition. This MFD takes information from the iHads and repeats it to one of your MFDs. At the top of the display is your compass. The torque percentage is displayed here followed by the airspeed indicator, radar altimeter, pitch ladder, artificial horizon, waypoint information, and the slip ball. The damage page reflects all of the systems in your longbow that can be damaged. If you sustain critical damage to an engine, you can and should shut that engine down. To shut down the left engine, Use the control left bracket key. To shut down the right engine, use the control right bracket key. If you experience an engine fire, you can activate the fire bottle using the control F key. I highly recommend using the fire bottle as an engine fire can spread quickly, causing damage to other subsystems. Okay, let's move. Nose down and pick up some speed. There are now two autopilot modes you can take advantage of. Press the A key. You are now in attitude hold autopilot mode. This mode will hold your current heading and is shown as AP1 on your iHads. This autopilot mode is very useful when you need to free up your hands from manipulating the various sensors. Press the A key. You are now in Navigation Autopilot mode. This mode will take you on the heading to your next waypoint and is displayed as AP2 on your iHads. Pressing the A key a third time deactivates the autopilot. For now, let's continue to the waypoint. Now, let's talk about the weapon page. In addition to the standard high explosive rockets, you now have the ability to carry submunition rockets. Submunition rockets separate before impact, releasing many small explosive projectiles, which are especially effective against troops and light armored vehicles. The symbology for MPSM rockets is shown as MP on your weapon page. Also, notice the chain gun burst setting. You can toggle between 10, 20, 50, and 100 round bursts by pressing the G key. Have some fun playing around with your cannon burst setting and new submunition rockets. When you are done, 
fly to waypoint two. Pull to a hover at waypoint two. SA-6, tracking, one o'clock. The co-pilot gunner is responsible for operating all of the systems vital to spotting, identifying, and tracking units on the battlefield. Let's begin by having a look around the cockpit. To switch to the CPG cockpit, press the keypad insert key. All flight controls, including cyclic, collective, and rudder, are also included in the front seat, allowing the CPG to fly the aircraft in the event of pilot injury or death or mechanical problems. All of the IHADS modes available to the pilot are also available in the front seat. The Heads Down Display, or HDD, is where the CPG spends most of his time. The HDD is comprised of two eyepieces which relay information from the various sensor systems to the CPG. You can switch between TADS and FCR acquisition modes while using the HDD. The heads out display repeats the data from the HDD onto a smaller display. The CPG cockpit also contains two multifunction displays. These MFDs cycle through the same displays available in the pilot cockpit. Their setting is independent of those in the back seat, though, allowing you to keep different displays active between the front and back seats. A good rule of thumb is to keep MFDs relating to the defensive systems active in the pilot station and displays referencing the offensive systems active in the front seat. The upfront controller now reflects actual elapsed mission time as well as critical damage information. The TADS is comprised of several systems. These systems include the FLIR, or forward-looking infrared, the DTV, or day television, the DVO, or direct view optics, and the laser rangefinder. Your sight status indicator is located here on the TSD and will show either FCR or TADS, depending on which mode you're in. The weapon page also indicates which sighting system you have active. Let's begin by learning about the FLIR. The FLIR, or forward-looking infrared, as I stated earlier, is essentially a camera that substitutes visible light for colors representing various heat signatures. These heat signatures are then converted to varying shades of black and white. You can switch the polarity of the flare using either black hot or white hot modes. Black hot mode displays heat sources as dark tones against white backgrounds, which represent cooler temperature ranges, and vice versa for white hot mode. The flare is most useful in spotting units at night, but can also be helpful when units are especially well camouflaged against the terrain. Okay, make sure you are in TADS acquisition mode. If not, use the home key to toggle. Press the keypad period key to go heads down. You are now in white hot mode. Notice how the color orientation has changed with heat sources now showing up as shades of white. In front of you are several different types of vehicles. Notice how easy it is to spot things now. You can pan the flare camera by using the joystick and alt keys by using the arrow keys on your keypad or by using your mouse and the left mouse button. To recenter the camera, use the keypad 5 key. You can zoom in using the keypad plus key. You can zoom the camera out using the keypad minus key. To switch flare polarity, press the keypad 7 key. Do this now. You are now in heads-down mode, looking through your TAD sensor in FLIR black hot mode. The next camera system we'll talk about is the DTV, or day television. Change your TADS camera by pressing keypad 1. The DTV is a television camera with a high zoom level which enables you to obtain accurate visual target confirmation at medium and long ranges in the narrow zoom level. Okay, 
press the keypad 1 key. You are now in DVO or direct view optics mode. The DVO is made up of several lenses which magnify an image coming in through the front of the sensor system and relay this image through one of the eyepieces on the HDD. The DVO is most useful in identifying objects at medium ranges and provides a wider field of view than either the FLIR or DTV. Lastly, we come to the laser designator. The laser designator provides extremely accurate range to target information as well as providing guidance for laser hellfires. Using the laser in conjunction with the chain gun will improve its accuracy as it is receiving more accurate range to target information. In addition, you can use your laser to light up a target while another aircraft delivers a laser guided weapon using your laser beam as guidance. This tactic is called buddy lazy. Target one of the vehicles by pressing the... Okay, you have just targeted an enemy vehicle. Now, take a look at your high action display. This is your range to target information, or the distance from you to your target. Now, activate the laser designator by pressing the keypad enter key. Notice how the symbology changed. You now have an indication the laser is activated, as well as range to target information displayed in meters. The flashing asterisk also indicates the laser is active. Okay, now I'll give you some time to fly around this waypoint and try out these new systems. Switch between your different cameras and their zoom levels to get a feel for them. When you are done, fly to waypoint 3. Proceed to waypoint three. Proceed to waypoint three.
Proceed to waypoint three. Okay, pull to a hover at waypoint three. We'll now talk about the modifications to the Long Bow Fire Control Radar, or FCR. Switch to FCR mode now by pressing the home key. Switch to FCR mode now by pressing the home key. Notice how the HOD has changed to display your radar. Although the symbology found in the RAD display is not reflected here, you can use this display to get a quick view of units spotted by the FCR. The first thing you need to do is activate the radar. Press the keypad enter key. Okay, your radar is now active as you can tell by the sweeping arm on the RAD MFD. You generally do not want to keep your radar sweeping continuously though, as that will alert enemy units to your presence. To avoid this, you can set your radar to perform a single sweep. To switch between single and continuous radar sweeps, press the keypad 3 key. To switch between single and continuous radar sweeps, press the keypad 3 key. Now, to perform a single sweep, press the keypad enter key. Your iHads will give you an indication when the FCR is activated by showing FCR transmit in the HAD. The HAD will also show you the radar computed range to target. This method is more accurate than TAD's triangulation, but less so than laser computed range, as FCR range is calculated once per sweep, so movement is not considered in the calculation. You now have the ability to control the arc or scan coverage of your radar. Think of the radar scan coverage as a pie slice. You can change the shape of this slice and control which direction it faces. The advantage in doing this is that your radar signals will be sent out in a focused area, revealing your location to fewer enemy units and will also provide you with faster radar updates. Although the Longbow FCR is very new, our intelligence sources estimate we'll only have a small window of time before other forces develop the ability to detect or jam the radar, so it is still a pilot's top priority to evade any type of detection, whether visual or electronic. With this in mind, let's learn the finer points of the FCR. Begin by reducing the scan coverage by pressing the keypad down arrow key. See how your pie slice narrowed? Press the keypad down arrow key one more time. Now that we've narrowed the radar scan coverage, let's try panning. Pan your radar by pressing the keypad left arrow key. Good. Pan your radar by pressing the keypad right arrow key. Okay, this is pretty simple, right? The difficult part comes in learning to effectively use this equipment in combat which we will cover later. Let's move on to the symbology you will find on your radar display and PSD. 
The different types of units you encounter on the battlefield will be represented by unique symbols. In addition, each symbol will change slightly depending on whether you have line of sight to the object and whether it is moving or stationary. Tracked vehicles, such as tanks, will appear as an H symbol. Wheeled vehicles, such as trucks, will appear as a circle. Air defense units, SAMs and AAA, will appear as a triangle. Helicopters appear as a bow tie shape. Fixed wing aircraft are represented as a small airplane symbol. Unknown targets appear as a square. Got all that? There's more. Now, for each of these symbols, if you have line of sight, the symbol will be solid. Without LOS, the symbol becomes outlined. Let's see this happen. Select any target in front of you. Now, take a look at its symbology on your TSD. Now, slowly reduce collective, keeping your eyes on the symbol. When you lose line of sight, you will see the symbol become outlined, indicating no line of sight. In addition, you also have the ability to overlay these symbols on top of your TADS display using a piece of equipment called the C-scope. The C-scope is basically a union of the FCR and TADS and is an incredibly useful addition. Make sure your FCR is still active and switch to TADS mode. Now, let's go heads down. Press the keypad period key. See how the FCR symbols are placed on top of the object seen in the camera? This helps in identifying distant objects and giving you a quick impression of what is out there. Now, let's move on to discuss the changes to your air-to-air -air radar. The air-to-air -air radar works in much the same way as the air-to-ground does. Switch to your air radar by pressing... Okay. Press the keypad down arrow key. See how the display became a semicircle? You can rotate the air radar in the same way you did for the ground radar. Press the keypad left arrow. Now, to perform a single sweep, press the keypad enter key. Now that you have an overview of these new systems, let's move on and put this new knowledge to use. Proceed to waypoint four. Let's talk about your wingman some. As you learned earlier, your wingman is an invaluable aid on the battlefield. There are now additional commands to give him to increase your battlefield effectiveness. Your wingman will follow you in one of two types of formations. The default formation is called combat crews. In this formation, your wingman will follow you at a distance of 50 meters. We got your target. This formation will increase his distance to 150 meters. This allows more maneuvering distance between you two and gives him some additional time to respond to an attack command, for example. To switch between formation types, press the do this now. Roger, opening formation. Notice how your wingman gave you a verbal confirmation of your command and move to the new formation. You can now get your wingman's loadout status. Press the 100% hellfire. This information is useful when planning target runs for your wingman, so you have an idea of what weapons he has available. I'll continue when we arrive at the waypoint.
Triple A tracking. Okay, pull to a hover at the waypoint. Be sure to stay below the ridge line. Let's continue talking about your wingman. Another new command is to order your wingman to stay at his current location. Do this now by pressing the Press the closing formation. Press the Press the... Roger, maintaining position. He will now stay in that spot until you tell him otherwise. Now, continue to the next waypoint, leaving your wingman where he is. Be sure to stay below the ridge line, as there are several SAM and AAA units on the other side. Next, we'll perform a coordinated attack using your wingman. Yaw your aircraft so that the open carrot is centered in your compass.
You and your wingman are now in battle positions. You can ask your wingman to pop up and scan the area. He will then pop up, acquire any targets, then download the information to your TSD. Do this now by pressing the Press the... Copy that. Notice how the targets your wingman found now appear on your TSD. Now, perform your own pop-up scan. Slowly add collective until your radome begins to pick up targets. Press the keypad enter key. Once you pick up targets, bob back down behind the ridgeline. Now, draw a PFZ around the group of targets closest to your wingman's position. You can send him up to 16 targets in a PFZ. Hand off the PFZ to him by pressing the... Roger, we got your target. This command will send your wingman the target or target list you've chosen for him. At this point, he will go into weapons hold mode, awaiting your command for him to fire. Now, draw a PFZ around your group of targets. Okay. We're now ready to perform the attack. Order your wingman to attack his PFZ by pressing... Copy that. Attacking your PFZ. Good hunting. This puts him into weapons free mode, at which point he will begin ripple firing hellfires at the PFZ you sent him. Make sure the targets are within his missile range. Otherwise, he will leave his position and move toward the targets until they're within his range. Now, begin firing missiles at the targets in your PFZ. Let's go. Launch some missiles at your targets. Good job. You've just performed a coordinated attack one of the most effective and least dangerous ways to attack a group of threats. You can all... To do this, you press the control minus key. Your wingman will give you a verbal confirmation as to which mode he's in, air to air or air to ground. If you know there are air threats nearby, you can order him to air to air mode, at which point he'll concentrate on those leaving you free to engage any surface threats, or vice versa. Sometimes you need a little extra protection on the battlefield when traveling through particularly dangerous areas. You can ask your wingman to cover you. This command is issued by pressing the... At that point, your wingman will hold his fire and only attack something that specifically threatens you. Okay, that wraps up our lesson on advanced avionics and tactics. These new systems and strategies, when practiced correctly, will greatly improve your chances of survival on the battlefield, not to mention increasing your lethality. Learn them. Love them. Live them.